Well, I'm uh, glad to be able to serve as fill-in host for Jeff Love again, who has scheduled us some wonderful programs for this month. And I'm especially pleased today to be able to introduce Mitchell Honor, who is one of our newer Kiwanians. I became a member last uh, November, I think. And uh, uh, again, glad to be introducing him. Uh, Mitchell hails from Mexico, Indiana, just north of Peru. And uh, he became a Boy Scout, eventually an Eagle Scout. Went to uh, Trinity College in Deerfield, Illinois, and graduated with a degree in business management with an emphasis on nonprofit and church management. And he has, uh, as of June 1st this year, will, be, have served, uh, will have served for one year as the district executive with the Sagamore Council of uh, Boy Scouts of America. And he is presenting a program today on how generations can rediscover nature. So we look forward to his program, and join me in welcoming him. Well, thank you for having me. Um, Lou, if you want to... Okay. So, um, you can go to the next slide, Lou. I don't know how this thing works. Um, so, we... So, the Sagamore Council, um, the way that the country is broken up into areas for the Boy Scouts is they're broken up into councils. Um, councils cover certain areas or certain um, geographic areas of the country. So, for our council, we actually cover from the Illinois border, um, all the way past Kokomo, all the way over to um, Marion, Rochester, up to Rochester, up to DeMont. We actually cover all the way up to just south of Valparaiso. So we cover most of north central Indiana, especially on the west side. Our district, though, is Tippecanoe, Warren, Benton, Carroll, and the northern half of Fountain Counties. So that is my area, um, and I work with a colleague of mine named Dylan, um, and our job is to make sure that scouting continues in our district. Um, in our district, we cover almost, or actually over 1,800 scouts a year. Um, we're pushing 1,900 for this year, um, and over 500 adult volunteers. Um, so scouting is, is uh, very, very strong in our district. Um, we make up over a third of scouting in our entire council, and most of that is in Lafayette. <clears throat> so, perfect. Oh no, go back. Um, so the mission statement of the Boy Scouts of America. Um, it is to prepare young people to make ethical and moral choices over their lifetimes by instilling them the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. Um, the Scout Oath is on my honor. I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the Scout Law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. The Scout Law is a Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. So by instilling those values into young people, we hope to create leaders, create moral and ethical people in society. Um, I actually have two videos for you. Um, the first video, Lou, you can go to uh, YouTube. So the first video is actually a Nature Valley video, um, the company that makes energy bars. Um, go to the full screen button on the bottom right of the video. <coughs> yeah, right there. Um, before I show this, um, we do not own this video. Um, it is Nature's Valley's presentation, their commercial, um, but it kind of meets our, um, we have the same goals. So. If you wanna... When you were a kid, what did you do for fun? So we'd go blueberry picking, for instance. Uh, just some pews. <laughs> but it's true. We grew watermelons, um, plantains. I found an old sign which was big enough for me to sit on, made of great tobacco. It was very slick, very fast. <laughs> I had a few fish in my basket, and I looked up on this bluff, and here's this black bear sitting there watching me. If he starts chasing me, I'm going to keep throwing the fish out of my basket until he's gorged and he won't, and he won't bother me. And what did you like to do for fun? You know, you go door to door, get a group of kids, and you play uh, lots of games, uh, hide and seek, just going out to the field and playing baseball. And we built these massive forts. You know, the kind that you can actually sit in and, and, and play in, you know, with, with our friends, and it was just really wonderful. So what do you like to do for fun? 
video games, definitely. I like to go on my phone, text, send email. email. My favorite thing to do in the world is definitely watching videos and playing video games. Those take up so much of my time. Three hours, or three to four hours a day. Same. Five hours straight. Just last week, I watched 23 episodes of a TV series in less than four days. I forget. I'm in a house, I have parents, I have a sister, I have a dog, I just think I'm in the video game, I completely get lost. I would die if I don't have my tablet. Whenever I feel upset, I play video games and I feel normal. It's really wonderful. When your daughters grow up, your great, great grandkids, what do you think will happen if this trend continues? It's scary to think that they'll never have to leave the house. Cindy grew up uh, doing a lot of the things that I did and, and enjoyed. And I see what uh, my grandsons are doing today, and it's, uh, it's mind-boggling. By the time they have kids, it's going to be a really different environment. I actually feel a little sad because I feel like he's missing out on what's out there in the beautiful world. start it yet so that is in essence our goal to make sure that the love of nature and you can actually keep the lights down because we have another video um, but that's what we want that's what our we strive for is to make sure that that love of nature doesn't die that kids don't stay inside and play video games 24 7 but they actually go outside and they have fun um, they learn how to take care of themselves they learn how to um, be perse perseverance and, um, you know, learn how to count on themselves and count on others, um, but also learn that it's up to us to take care of the earth that we have. Um, so the second video is actually just one experience that kids can have through scouting. Um, the Summit Vector Reserve, a place like no other in the world, go tucked in the heart of West Virginia. A place made possible through the generosity of donors who see the Bechtel Summit's adventures, programs, and technological opportunities is vital to addressing the evolving needs of youth. A place where future leaders are shaped, where scouts and venturers can push themselves further and develop skills for a lifetime. Whether seeking adventure or simply pausing to take it all in, people are drawn to the natural beauty of the New River Gorge. It's stunning. It's challenging. It's life-changing. What better setting for the Bechtel Summit? In 2013, the summit opened to 40,000 scouts, venturers, and leaders as the new permanent home of the National Scout Jamboree. With a theme of Go Big, Get Wild, attendees experienced a whole new vibe for the Jamboree. As big a success as the 2013 National Scout Jamboree was, it was only the beginning. The summit core values, with strong roots and fundamental scouting principles, are the underpinnings of everything scouts do at the summit. Leadership. Challenging experiences shape leaders. Scouts and adventurers are challenged to rise to levels they never dreamed possible and learn that they're capable of much more than they realized. Service. Through service, scouts and adventurers reinforce the concepts of responsibility, commitment, and collaboration. Sustainability. The Bechtel Summit is poised to be a leader in sustainable practices and education for the scouting community and beyond. High adventure. These challenges bring the satisfaction of learning that there are no limits to what scouts and venturers can accomplish. The Paul R. Kristen National High Adventure Base takes high adventure to a new level. Whether soaring through the trees or carving single track berms or riding into the break of a standing wave, each high adventure activity is tailored to the participant's ability 
Scouts can delve deeply into one of four week-long programs in specific focus areas or explore all summit elements in the Summit Experience Program. Opening in 2015, the James C. Justice National Scout Camp will introduce a whole new summer experience initially targeted toward older scouts' advancement. Participants can pursue merit badges directly related to Bechtel Summit activities and focus areas. Future National Training and Leadership Programming is on the way at the Bechtel Summit's National Training Center, officially opening in 2016. Scouts, venturers, and scout leaders will receive a comprehensive training experience that will arm them with the tools to ensure scouting success in their home units, districts, and councils. Go further at the Bechtel Summit in scouting, in life. Visit summitbsa.org to sign up your scouts and venturers today. Okay, Lou, you can go back to the presentation. So, like I said, that's just one experience that kids can have through scouting, out of hundreds. Um, that's one of four high adventure bases that we have in the nation. Um, and those are experiences that, if you go up to uh, the top left, go to from current slide. Yeah, right there. Um, that's just one experience that they can have. Um, we actually have a scout reservation out in New Mexico where they can take a 120 mile hike and surmount four mountains in two weeks. Um, we have a, um, a reservation in Florida, it's called Sea Base, where they can actually man a sailboat for eight days. Um, and it is a captain and it's 10 scouts. There's no professional people running the boat. They learn how to do all the knots. They learn how to do all of the sails. Um, they get to sail a boat by themselves. Um, we also have um, what's called Northern Tier, um, which is a canoeing trip um, in Minnesota. And actually, you can canoe from Minnesota to Canada and back. Um, they canoe close to 50 miles and over, um, and they get to experience all of the wildlife up there, which is amazing. Um, so those are four of the high adventure experiences they can have, but that's just a small part of what scouting is. Um, Cub Scouts. Um, Cub Scouts is for the younger kids. It actually starts at six years old, first grade, and it goes to 10 years old. Um, they learn those core values through having fun, through activities, through crafts, um, but through games. So they, they think that they're just having fun, but they're actually learning these skills that will follow them throughout their entire lives, um, like being trustworthy and like being loyal. Um, but it's focused on building the character, improving physical fitness, and teaching practical skills, um, and developing a spirit of community service in those kids. Um, locally, we have 32 Cub Scout packs in our district. Um, quite a few of those are in Lafayette. Um, it's, we are close to 1,000 Cub Scouts. Um, but it is very easy to get Cub Scouts, kids that are six, seven, eight years old, really excited about Cub Scouts. It's so easy to say, do you want to shoot BB guns? Do you want to shoot bow and arrow? Do you want to go camping? Do you want to build your own fire and roast marshmallows? That is so much fun. That is one of the best parts of my job is going to talk to those first and second graders and getting them excited about what they can actually do and accomplish. Um, the next, next program, the traditional program of Boy Scouts is Boy Scouts. Um, it is for the oldest um, or the older boys starts at 11 years old and goes to 18. Um, they focus on teaching skills and ingraining morals in today's youth. Um, merit badges, I'm sure all of you know what a merit badge is. Um, it's essentially giving them kind of a crash course on different skills. So you can take welding, you can take orienteering, um, you can take hiking. There's, there's a merit badge for almost everything. There's over 100 of them. So it gives kids the ability to focus on things that they wouldn't be able to without it. Um, how many 14-year-old kids do you know that can weld? I know quite a few. Um, high Adventure, like we talked about earlier, it's for the older scouts that get the more intense leadership opportunities, the more intense scouting opportunities. Um, but they get to go out and they get to challenge themselves in these harsh environments sometimes. Um, I know someone who went to Northern Tier and they saw a water spout. Um, if you're caught under a water spout, you're in trouble. Um, but they get to see amazing things. I actually went to Sea Base when I was a kid 
and I got to be on one of those sailboats for eight days, and it changed my life. It was amazing. Um, but you get those experiences that you wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. Um, here locally, we have 19 Boy Scout troops um, that those Cub Scouts can transfer into when they're done with Cub Scouts, um, and they get to go on to bigger and better things. Um, beyond that, there are programs called Venturing and Sea Scouts. Sea Scouts we do not have here because we're in the middle of Indiana. Um, but it is, it's scouting for, um, uh, I don't know how to explain it, naval scouting, I guess. Um, it's very popular on the coasts, obviously. Uh, we actually have one in Rensselaer, um, in our council, and they get to go out on the lakes and they have a boat that they do all their stuff on. It's really cool, um, but uh, they promote the maritime heritage, and they actually, a lot of the Naval Academy will actually recruit out of Sea Scouts. They love having Sea Scouts. Um, venturing, um, they focus on those high adventure experiences, so they go rock climbing, they go whitewater rafting. That is their main thing, um, and both of these programs are co-ed, so it allows girls to be part of our program. Um, we are actually chartered by Congress um, for Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts to only focus on boys because the Girl Scouts are actually chartered by Congress as well um, and they are a separate organization. Um, but once they hit 14 years old, they have the choice to enter our programs that they would like. Uh, but venturing um, is completely youth-led. Boy Scouts should be youth-led, but venturing, um, they have advisors where they let the, the venturers do the entire program. They get to say, this is what we want to do, this is how much it's going to cost, this is how we're going to do it, and the advisors say, that's a good idea, or maybe we should rethink this. Um, but they're more focused on those leadership opportunities and less focused on learning specific skills like welding. Um, but uh, they actually, they form their own crews and get to lead each other um, through these high adventures. So it's a very cool program. Um, and lastly, it is a program called Exploring. Um, Exploring is focused on careers. Um, this is a new program. It's less than 10 years old. Um, but uh, what the idea is that we, as scouting executives, we go to businesses or um, government agencies, and we start what's called a post. And this post would be focused around whatever that business is good at. For instance, the picture on the bottom right is our um, exploring post with the uh, Tippecanoe Canoe Sheriff's Department. Um, they have about 20 to 25 kids a year who come in and learn about what it takes to be a police officer, what they would need to do to become a police officer. It's a very, very cool program. Um, they get a lot of experiences like ride-alongs. Um, they learn all of the codes and language of being a police officer. Um, and they, gotta, they get the opportunity to work events like, um, like the feast. They do traffic for the feast. Um, so they get some really cool experiences. And we're working on um, growing this program, especially in Lafayette and with Purdue, um, trying to have the kids in our area um, look at Purdue as an option for school. Um, because what I've learned from the professors that I've worked with so far, Purdue doesn't do a great job at recruiting the kids in our area because it's in their backyard. They don't feel like those kids need to hear about what programs they have because it's all around them. Um, but most of those professors want to change that and our program can help them do that. Um, we also have a program with our fire rescue at Lafayette Fire Department um, and we have a couple with Purdue as well. So that is a very cool upcoming program that we're trying to push um, because it's more career focused rather than um, scouting focused. Um, it allows those kids to kind of test what they want to do for the rest of their lives. Um, gives them the option to pay $30 for an entire year of a career option rather than going to college for something they don't know they want to do and spend $30,000 kind of figure out what they don't they don't want to do it. So um, that's the idea of exploring. It is a growing program. Um, here in our council we have two camps. Um, here in Lafayette, we have Cary Camp, which is out on 26. Uh, it's just east of the Meyer. Um, that's more focused on the Cub Scouts. So we have this uh, this summer, we'll have two camps. Um, 
we'll have close to 600 kids come out to those two camps um, this summer. Um, and then Camp Buffalo, which is up in Buffalo, Indiana, it's, it's close to Monticello. Um, we have over 500 kids signed up for summer camp right now, um, and that starts in a couple weeks. So those two camps serve quite a few kids in our area. Um, last year we served over 1,200 kids with just at our camps, um, giving them camping opportunities. Um, we cover 16 counties in North Central Indiana, um, the Sagamore Council does. Last year we served over 5,700 kids in our council. Um, and like I said, almost 2,000 of those are here. Um, and then we covered 1,300 adult leaders. Um, and what we focus on is making sure those leaders have what they need to succeed so that this could, those kids have the best program possible and have the best opportunity to learn those skills um, and to get to have those experiences. Um, last year we had over 5,500 service hours uh, recorded by those scouts, um, and that's only the ones that were recorded. Um, our estimates are over 15,000 uh, service hours that were given back to the community by those scouts. Um, Recording those is sometimes an issue. Um, but uh, last year in our council, we had 56 young men attain the, the rank of Eagle Scout. Um, 25 of those were in our district. Um, quite a few of those were from Lafayette. So that is a great accomplishment. And that is the end of my presentation. I told, uh, I told you guys it'd be short. So um, is there any questions or anything that you guys wonder? Yeah. What in your estimation would be one or two of the more exotic merit badges. Exotic merit badges, wow. Um, you can get a merit badge in motor boating. Um, you can learn how to service and function a, uh, a motor boat. That's pretty cool. Um, we're actually trying to get that at, at Buffalo, take them up to the lake um, and let them work on motor boats. Um, let's see. Some of the cooler ones that I've seen so far are focused on the STEM um, focuses. Um, so chemistry, uh, physics, um, computer engineering, um, some very, very cool um, STEM opportunities for those kids. So, hey Mitchell? Yep. I'm curious about Cary Camp. Mm -hmm. you know, I drive by out there occasionally. Do you have any idea when it was established and why the name Cary? Um, when it was established, I believe it was back in the 1930s, um, a man named Franklin Cary um, donated that land to scouts. Um, we actually, I think we have close to uh, 20 acres um, of land. Uh, we cover all the way back to the creek um, and beyond that creek. Um, and since the 30s, it's been a small scout reservation for Lafayette. Um, but it was donated by a, a local man that believed in scouting and wanted his land to benefit those scouts. So um, that has been a functioning camp for close to 100 years. Given the, uh, the uh, Nature Valley video that we saw with the generations and mm -hmm. the differences, have you noticed, or because you've been in it for a while, and up to about the so speak. Have you seen changes in terms of participation, community support, parental, uh, you know, support and guiding the, their kids and grandkids into mm -hmm. scouting? Uh, has it increased? Has it decreased over time? Um, our organization for the past 40 to 50 years has been slowly atrophying. Um, There's an idea of what scouting is, especially for kids. Um, they see it as almost like their nerdy thing to do. But it's not. Um, they get to do some really, really cool things and unique things, um, but it's hard to overcome that perception. Um, it has been slowly, um, slowly losing numbers um, because it is an outdoor program and kids just aren't focused on being outdoors anymore. Um, and that's what we want to change. Our district and our council has been one of the very few in the nation that has grown the past couple of years. Um, we have grown by 
two or three percent every year. Um, so we're working on changing that. Um, support in the community, um, the the rise in nonprofits and the the amount of money that goes into those nonprofits doesn't change. Um, the more nonprofits that we get, they're all fighting over the same dollars. Um, so just like every other nonprofit, there are financial issues, um, but we work around it. We find a way to make it make it happen, and um, we have community support. We also have support from our families that are part of the com uh, part of the program. Um, that's obviously something we try to grow as well. It's financial support, um, but it's also difficult as well. Um, and then parent involvement is very difficult. Um, we're actually trying to start a uh, Cub Scout pack with the Salvation Army. Um, we've been trying for a couple months now, um, and just finding that family support is, is incredibly <laughs> difficult um, because parents don't have time. Um, and it is a family organization. Um, they're family units where the parents lead, um, and they put that program together for their kids with the help of our resources. Because um, obviously there's not enough of us to put on the program for every kid in our in our district or council or, or the nation. Um, so it's always a struggle is finding the parental support. Um, but like I said, it's it's easy to get very young kids excited about shooting BB guns and gun canoeing and getting a swim and roast marshmallows. That's that's very very um, fulfilling. And it's it's. It's a fun part of my job. Um, but once they get into that Boy Scout age range, that perception of what scouting, they think scouting is and what their peers think scouting is, kind of takes over for quite a few of them. And it's hard to overcome that. So, Rodney? Just a comment. I hope I don't steal your thunder here, but, but I've done a lot of speeches and scouting over the years. And one of, most of you, probably all of you remember the old Fram oil filter, pay me now or pay me later. Well, scouting is one of those programs that you can pay me now for, for a minimum amount of dollars, or in fact, you can also pay me later when you're in prison. And they did a research project in Texas, which has one of the largest prison populations. And in that entire system, there was no Eagle Scouts at all in prison. And so the, the point is you can pay me now and join Scouts, get people involved in too, learn, learn leadership and, and build character, or you can pay me later. Mm -hmm. And you don't understand the, the values that comes with it. So not, not to oh, your no. thunder, but the, Thank you, Rodney. That, um, that program has changed our, our son's life. Mm -hmm. uh, as Mitchell also said, it changed his. But the scouting, and he went, he went to uh, Philmont. Mm -hmm. And he also went to the National Jamboree. But he went out a boy and came back a man. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, I, was a, I was a Boy Scout when I lived in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And it was... It was relatively easy, I thought, to get the, the kids that were in my school group to join up and go with the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. uh, we had been Cub Scouts before, but as we got as we got older, we found out that almost every Saturday, uh, in the good weather, our scout leaders would take us out into nature and we'd hike mm -hmm. and we'd find. Uh, new things in nature that we didn't know anything about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had I had the good fortune to be in a Boy Scout troop where a certain young man came by and picked me up every day to go to Scouts when we had it once a week. And he later became a Nobel Prize winner, and many of the people wow. here know uh, of uh, James Dewey Watson. Uh, in uh, DNA and Crick and so forth. And he was, I was in his mother's uh, Cub Scout mm -hmm. group. Uh, it always worried me that you couldn't get kids to go into, into Boy Scouts mm -hmm. here in this community. I, I couldn't get my kids to do it. They, they, they followed me, they went, they, they went into Cub Scouts because I was the Cub Scout leader. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they didn't go, didn't go into Boy Scouts 
they, they always quit after we, we bought the uh, uniform for them. <laughs> <laughs> so they all in prison now? <laughs> no, no, neither one of them are in prison. <laughs> they're, they're both uh, positions. But so. they, uh, they got a small part of the program, though. And our goal is to make sure that every young man gets at least a small portion of it. Um, I don't know the exact percentages, but it's once they start scouting, whether they get a week of it, or a year of it, or 10 years of it, they're 40 to 50% less likely to go to prison. They're 80% less likely to commit crime. Um, there's some incredible statistics that have been done, um, and I didn't bring the studies with me, I should have, um, that show that scouting and the positive impacts that it provides really changes lives, it really does. Um, and it positively impacts the communities that it's in, um, the people that it touches. Um, and it's amazing to me, the leaders of these Cub Scout packs and, and Boy Scout troops, they're the ones that say it changes them the most because they get to see their kids change. Like, like uh, the Vanderveers got to see their, their sons change um, as he grew up. Um, and it really helps mold them into great community leaders and good, strong people in the community. Uh, Lou, you have? I want to uh, mention as a uh, former scout master that uh, I certainly uh, understand and agree with what, what, you, what I heard you said about the challenges as, uh, the, as you get to be Boy Scouts uh, that age. Uh, the, the, the number of activities and different things that come into play at those years. That's mm -hmm. why at the Cub Scout ages, the, the kids have a, a chance to really can focus on Cub Scouts because that's their, their primary thing. As they get older, they have a number of activities. And it, it doesn't have to be it, not just sports or things like that. It can be uh, band, it can be uh, music, and other, all the other different activities mm -hmm. you have as they grow up. Yeah, and, and that's, especially for, it's, it's becoming, um, the younger and younger they are, the, the more that they're moving that age back for kids to start sports. Um, I mean, you can start soccer when you're three, four years old now. That's before Cub Scouts can, yeah. can start. Mm -hmm. um, so they get so focused on sports and so focused on um, band or whatever it is. Um, that they don't have time and they don't see scouting as an option um, to fit into their time. Um, because everyone's got so little time to give already. Um, and especially the amount of time that we ask of our parents um, to help us put the program on. Because um, like I said, we can't do it alone. Um, but, uh, do I have? Yeah. Oh, okay, a couple more minutes. Um, but what, what kids don't understand and what, what I try to tell um, older scouts or older men that are thinking about starting scouting, I played multiple sports in high school and I still got my Eagle Scout. I played soccer in college. Um, I mean, I was a college athlete. I graduated. Uh, I still helped scouting. Um, there's time to give. There's, you have enough time to, to be part of both. Um, but what they don't understand is that scouting, especially if you get your Eagle Scout, follows you for the rest of your life. You can put Eagle Scout on your resume for the rest of your life, regardless of whether you're 25 or 85. Um, and I can't put that I was a college athlete on my, on my resume anymore. I mean, employers don't really care. Uh, but I can put Eagle Scout on there and they can, they'll see that as a huge accomplishment. And it is. Uh, it takes five, six, seven years of your life to accomplish it. Um, and it really says something about the perseverance of a young man. Lou? I just want to say that the way we channel, uh, tried to handle it with our, with our group was that we could share, that, that, you know, that you could have time for both activities. And I, I was fortunate enough with the group that I, I had they were, they, they did spend time in college, high school with their, with their uh, activities and their sports. Uh, some of them, and most of them were all in, in band and they mm -hmm. were very accomplished and very good bands. Uh, I'm going to have to cut you short, Lou. Okay. 
she's 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 pushing me off. I was going to say we were fortunate enough that we still had I had seven, six, or seven eagles. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the best part about my job is I get to see the Eagle Scouts every month. Um, I see 20 Eagle Scouts a year. Um, it's incredible to see what encouraging young men they are, um, how strong of community leaders they already are at 17 years old, um, the projects that they've done to help the community. Um, it's incredible the life-changing experiences they get to go through because of this program. So thank you guys for uh, listening to me. Mitchell, and here's a small gift to again, great, great program. We hope that it would greatly benefit some of the kids that come to the Salvation Army. So we, we hope we can get that going. So thank you again.